Peter King, Snorlax, <laughs> Vaporeon, Crobat, Slurpuff, and Trevenant. Well, I don't see any reason to depart from what I have been doing so far. Snorlax is a pain. I'm going to need that Orbeetle, I think, to beat it. Another round with Slur Slurpuff. Again, Unburden, although it's good to know it doesn't get Belly Drum anymore. Um, and Nido King, we saw what Nido King did last battle. I've always been quite partial to Nido King. It's had a lot of damage with Life Orb, Share Force, and a really good move pool. Once again, we have inner focus on the Crobat. So I have absolutely no idea what my opponent wants to do here, so I'm just going to have a bit of a look-see. No, that's pointless. I actually have the ability to stop the Vaporeon from doing anything. So I think it is kind of pointless, and I think I do want to still outspeed these Pokémon, so we're going to fake out. Yeah, Mr. Pizza Hunter, I've had a couple of challenges now. Um, I've gotten beaten up by uh, Viper, and such a Viper, and by Ronda. And I'm now playing... Helmet, good to know. Fortunately, I don't think that's a super effective move, so it doesn't actually activate my weakness policy. But that Crobat is a whole lot less alive than it was a minute ago, which is good. Yeah, see, that one's got Black Sludge. That's what I think, I think what Ronda's was as well. I think I just wasn't paying very much attention. Alright, so I now know that I do need to actually um, get two speed ups <coughs> on my Moltres in order to outspeed that Crobat, so we're going to not make that mistake this time. And we're going to parting shot... I think I'm going to parting shot the Crobat. No, Inner Focus, I can't... I think Inner Focus only stops Intimidate, I don't think it stops parting shot. I guess we're going to find out. Toxic on the Moltres, not ideal, uh, but you know what, it's okay, because at the end of the day the Moltres is not the tankiest thing going around, and we do want to make sure... I don't, I don't have a lot of healing on this team, deliberately. Surf going on. Knocked out their own Crobat. Not sure about that. I wonder if that was aimed more at the Incineroar I had out on the field. It's okay. Surf can be really, really good when you use it against, um, use it with a Dragapult or a Colossal. Yeah, the Dragapult Colossal team is, is a very nice combo. I think Surf Weavile was also really good with the Colossal. Okay, Slurpuff. Shiny Slurpuff, very pretty. Nice chocolate cup chocolate cherry cupcake. So I think I have the speed boosts up now, so I am just going to 
No, you know what? I think I just want the extra speed on the slurp huff. And we're going to take that rocky helmet if we can. So good. That get rid that gets rid of the slurp huff. We don't have to play any shenanigans with its unburden and uh, fairy type moves on our dark type Moltres. Unfortunately, doesn't get. It means that I will get the speed boost on my uh, Rotom here as well. I'll give over my Choice Scarf over to the Vaporeon. Need to remember that it has it. It is now actually going to be fast. But I will have that Rocky Helmet so I can now safely punch that Vaporeon. Oh, and that's unfortunate for my opponent. They've locked themselves into a non damaging move, so they're probably going to have to swap out and lose that now. Otherwise, I am just going to chip them down. So my opponent sends out their Trevenant. Well, I'm not sure what this Trevenant wants to do, but I'm going to Fiery Wrath. I think we're just going to put a Will-O-Wisp down on this Trevenant as well. So my opponent had to basically swap out the Vaporeon there, it just wasn't going to do anything otherwise except sit there. Might Toxic Stormy down, but... So we do a good chunk with the... the Fiery Wrath. I don't even have any stat boosts on this Moltres right now. Um, I would normally have gone for the, uh, the Nasty Plot there to get the damage up, but um, my Moltres is toxic and I don't want to lose the speed boost I already have on it so I'm just going to let it sit in here until it dies and I don't think a nasty plot's worth it right now so leftovers on the Snorlax and we've got a Trevenant behind a substitute so look, I'm just going to keep going for the Fiery Wrath I think and we're just going to get a Will-O-Wisp down on the Snorlax as well Make sure we don't get any belly drum shenanigans here. This should get through that Trevenant sub. My opponent's got a bit of a stally team thing going on here. Don't like that. My opponent's cursing. Mm. Oh, we got the attack drop off from the burn anyway. I think my Rotom's done all it can here now, and I think the question is, do we just let the Moltres go down here? Yeah, it's that irritating harvest set, so my opponent's gone for a very bulky Stooly team. What do I need the Moltres for? I don't really need the Moltres for anything here, so I am just going to keep doing chunks of damage with the Moltres's uh, Fiery Wrath. And I'm actually going to get the Rotom out of here. So my opponent's just trying to stall me down with Toxic. It's okay. Still do a nice chunk to the Snorlax. Not much of a chunk, some damage to the Snorlax. Bit of chip. Nullify those leftovers. Just get the scissor in here. Actually, I should have put the incineroar in. That was foolish. Should have been the incineroar. That's alright. We can fix that. And my opponent's going very heavy on the setup here. 
Uh, but unfortunately for them, they are burned, so even though they are boosting their attack, their attack is also halved. And they're getting very lucky on the harvest procs without the sun. So, now I get my Incineroar in. That's why I said it didn't matter. Just get those attacks right back down again. And I also don't want to deal with my opponent's uh, fat Snorlax. So I could just. I could just Darkest Lariat and ignore his defenses anyway. I mean, the fake out's right there, so. I don't even need to fake out. What am I doing? I don't even need to fake out. We can either roar out the Snorlax or we can. Darkest Lariat. I think I can just Darkest Lariat the Snorlax, to be perfectly honest. And... Trevenant doesn't actually have any stat boosts up, so we are going to just um, dual wing beat the Trevenant. Should have Swords danced. Would have been a really good opportunity. Now my opponent hasn't used their max yet, I don't believe, so we do still have to deal with that, and I'm expecting it on the Snorlax. Which is why I want to get as much damage down on the Snorlax as I can. Yeah. Damage. Alright, so my opponent's going for rest. Is it a resto chesto set? It's not a resto chesto set, so we are going to get some nice stat drops on this uh, Snorlax. And to be perfectly honest, I don't think there's a whole lot that the no, it could actually burn me, so we don't want to risk... In fact, I might just... Double check my speed stats, because my Pokémon aren't all level 50, so that's, level, that's 94 speed. And the Scissor is 85, so that's going to work out nicely. So, we should be able... Cineroar's going to eat that up. It's a pretty fat cat. My opponent's locked himself into Surf, which I think may be their only damaging move. We're going to get a parting shot up on the Snorlax to drop its attack. And I think we're going to swap in our... Rotom here. So we can get that Will O Wisp off again when it wakes up. And then we're going to U turn the Trevenant. And we're going to go straight back into our Incineroar. I was just checking the speed stats to make sure that'd go off in the correct order. Got that Snorlax pretty, pretty down on its stats again. It does have Sleep Talk, okay. What's its attacking move? It's, it's got Curse. So we haven't seen its attacking move. We've seen Rest, Sleep Talk, Curse, so it's only got a single attacking move. I'm going to assume it's probably... Would it be Return or would it be Crunch? I mean, Return's good for the stab. Um, maybe it's even Earth... No, you wouldn't want to put Earthquake because then, then your Levitators get around it. Uh, if you're using Return, then Ghost types dodge it. Um, so Crunch might be the move it. Crunch, crunch might actually be the move it has, just to make sure that you can actually hit an opponent with it. So. I am just gonna. Uh, So it's plus three defense, but it's neutral on its attack. So I think we do want to 
a bit of chip on that. We want one more round with the Incineroar. Hopefully we've got that one the right way around as well. I think the Rotom should be faster. Nope, my opponent's had enough. They're, they're getting out of that. And they are using their Nita King. And they're blocking the Volt Switch with the Nito King. Alright, we've got the Parting Shot down, which is nice. Might just get the Darmanitan out here. See if we can just do a bit of damage with the Darm. The Nido King is not actually. Okay, it's water absorbed by Porion. I should have seen that coming. That's a okay. It doesn't heal very much. I don't think I actually need my Darmanitan for anything here, so I'm just going to go for a Rock Slide. It's going to get hit by the Choice Scarf Surf, and I don't really care all that much. Yeah, so Surf was definitely going to take it out. And it's bad in passing. Okay, so they, they like to set up a Napper Ring and Baton Pass if they can, that's fair enough. Back into the Snorlax. He's still asleep for another turn, but we do get the Hydro Pump off into the Nido King. Who doesn't seem to enjoy that very much. Alright, we're gonna go right back out to our Incineroar. Yet, yet another Intimidate off on this Snorlax. Yeah, and that's why I didn't want to go for the fake out, because I figured they were probably maxing the Snorlax, and I didn't want to waste my fake out. Oh, they're going for the Vaporeon! Fascinating! Two minutes until the battle ends, well. Fortunately for them, I'm not sure the Vaporeon can take the Volt Switch even from there. No, it can't. I guess it would have saved them from the fake out, though. And it gets around the Choice Scar, so it does mean that they can then make other attacking moves. So against the Snorlax, I think we do... I think we're just going to drop the Ore Beetle out for now.
and we do still have a um, sword stance scissor in the back. I don't think the battle's going to go that long because we are getting close to timer, but it does mean we have a we have a choice band option in the back as well. So I'm curious what my opponent's attacking move is. Do we get to see it here? Nope, we're still seeing curse. So I'm going to keep. I'm just going to do damage as much as I can. Yeah, that does a good chunk with an iron defense, that'd be doing even more. Darkest Lariat, okay, instead of Crunch, that makes sense. That does not do a whole lot to my War Beetle. We're just going to go for another body press and another hydro pump. Yeah, my opponent's just uh, ran out, so hard luck. Good game. I'm afraid I've closed my queue, so I'm going to just clear out my challenges uh, for now, but come back and challenge later this afternoon or tomorrow or the next day. All right, Brooks, good luck, have fun. We did that all on Friday, so I'm not going to lead, as I said mentioned earlier, I'm not going to lead the Incineroar or Moltres at my opponent. Um, no, one, no one deserves that twice, unless they particularly uh, uh, explicitly request it. I have been giving some opponents the opportunity to, to choose my leads on some third and fourth rematches, just to make sure that they have a bit more of a, uh, have a chance to kind of show up what they want to do with their team and give themselves the best setup opportunity. And a few opponents have actually requested to go into the Moltres and Cigarro, so I will leave that against them if they ask for it after the first time, but I won't do it to people after the first time otherwise. Okay, I remember this team. We've got Slipuff, Nidoking, Crobat, Vaporeon, Snorlax, Trevenant. So, I think we're going to go with them. No, let's not do the Moltres. We are going to go with, I think we might just go with our secondary lead here of Rotom and Scizor. My opponent's likely to lead with the, uh, my opponent's likely to lead with the Crobat, um, which is in a focus, so I can't take it out anyway, and if they lead with the Ghost type alongside it, then there's not a whole lot I can do. Whereas uh, we already know from last time we battled, we're going to have a lot of fun by tricking the choice staff onto that Vaporeon, who only had Sir. Okay, it is a Nido King, so that's a bit of a problem for him now. Yeah, that's not good for my people, unfortunately. We are going to get the Vault Push off here into the Crobat. I think we're actually just going to straight up hard switch. I don't have switch to scissor. I don't really have a good switch into this Nido King. What do I need the scissor for this battle? Don't need it for the Trevenant. I mean, I could use it for the Trevenant, but I don't need it if I have the Manitan or the Moltres. Slurpuff, it'd actually be really handy for Slurpuff. So I think I do want to save the scissor. I Means someone needs to die. You can take a flamethrower. Alright, we're gonna throw it in some line there. Doesn't really achieve much, but... Okay, my opponent's um, swapping in as well. So I felt the Vault Switch is pretty safe, just because I could... Um, the only ground type they had was already on the field in the other spot, so the Vault Switch was safe into the... Into the into that slot. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping the Nido King does go for the flamethrower here. If it goes for the Earth Tower, I'm in probably in some trouble. Whoa! 
one left do I have to actually KO this new deck thing? I probably should have Hydro Pumped it to be honest. I think that's actually my best thing to deal with it. Alright, we're gonna toss the Orb Beetle in here. Actually, that was a really bad Pokemon put in here. I'm not sure why I did that. Citrus Berry Life Orb, so it is the. Okay, good. We do get that prediction correct, and we do get the Flamethrower into the Incineroar. You can eat that up. So we're going to go for the Iron Defense here, and we're going to just fake out the Nido King. I don't know that there's anything that Trevenant can do by Incineroar to KO it. It's the Harvest set. Okay, so my opponent swaps it out. I mean, Fake Out's not doing anything here either. We're getting a good positioning match this time around. And in comes the Vaporeon. A bit of chip on the, on the uh, Crobat is not a bad thing. So I think what I'm going to go for here is I'm actually going to store power at the Crobat. And I'm going to parting shot the Crobat as well. Yeah, I don't think my opponent wants the Vaporeon in just yet. Uh, the, the thing I did to them last time was was kind of nasty. I did actually um, trick the choice staff onto their Vaporeon, whose only attacking move was Surf, which meant that they were hitting their own teammates just as much. Now they are making the Crobat big, so I feel a lot better about my sword power. Sorry, my, my parting shot here. We are going to try and do a bit of chip to them. And they're getting the max air stream up. So they've learned from the last battle how much a max air stream matters. Um, that speed boost is huge. And our sword power is not doing a whole lot to the crowbat there. But we are going to drop its damage potential a bit further with the parting shot. We're going to go out into the Rotom. We're going to try and Hydro Pump the, the Nido King here, I think. Hopefully my opponent reads this as me trying to get an electric attack off against the Crobat and doesn't realise that I'm actually going to Hydro Pump the Nido King. Which is exactly what I'm going to do. So we're going to actually Iron Defense again with our Orbeetle, get it a bit more bulky. And we're going to straight up Hydro Pump into the Nido King. They did read this correctly when we played last time. And I did swap the Water Absorb Vaporeon into that. But since I don't have any damage down on the Vaporeon, I actually don't mind that too much because what's the Vaporeon going to do? So they do get an airstream off. If they flamethrower the Orb Beetle, so be it. I could have Allied Switched maybe, but we're burning my opponent's Dynamax turns here as well. Okay, so they just go straight up for the Sludge Wave. I get a crit on my Rotom, which is a bit unfortunate. It would have taken that a lot better without the critical hit. But you know what, that's okay. Because we do Hydro Pump the Nido King. And the Nido King goes bye bye. So we can now cycle out another Intimidate with the Incineroar. I think it's one of the reasons why the Incineroar is just such an obnoxious Pokemon in doubles. Because you can cycle Intimidate and fake out. And then as it's cycling out, you're not wasting a turn swapping out, you're parting shot and you're getting those stat drops off every single time you're swapping out as well. And I think a lot of people don't realise just how much a few attack drops really makes to your uh, to your damage output. So my opponent does have a good situation here in which I can't productively fake out. So we're just going to go for the Darkest Lariat here into the Trevenant. And do we need this Rotom? kind of like this Rotom. Do 
do need it. Tricking the Choice Scarf onto the Vaporeon would be nice. It's also the only super effective kit I have on the Vaporeon. But I don't know what else I'd really want to sacrifice. Don't really need the Dimanitan for much, so I, I think I am going to keep the Rotom here, and we're going to swap into the Dimanitan. I suppose Trevenant does just straight up go for the Protect, that's a good play. So if I use this for Max Bug into the Dimanitan, it's going to eat that up like That Crobat is very, very fast to max the ice cream on it. Just sorry, I mean to protect there on the Trevenant. So they did protect last turn, which means we do kind of have a free shot with the, the Dr. Slary here, it's not going to take it out, it's definitely not going to take it out, but I think a nice, fact, maybe we don't even go for it. I think we want the Crowback gone. We just Rock Slide and Dr. Slary it. Yeah, the Trevin is not even staying in. So Crowbat uses Toxic, which I, I really don't mind. My Incineroar is constantly coming in and out of the battlefield of battle. I'd actually rather it be Toxic, just so it can't get another star if it's more irritating. Unfortunately, it does dodge the Rock Slide. Um, that's where Rock Slide misses more than it hits. It's okay. Pretty good jump on it with the Axelariot here. And we are going to just parting shot now into the Crobat slot. We're going to try and get a, another Rock Slide off. Rock Slide flinches are OP okay when you can get them. Wind Beat comes in, does a bit of damage to my amount of time, but not a whole lot. This time it's the Vaporeon that gets the dodge on the rock slide. I'd rather, I, I'm okay with that actually, because I'd rather, I'd rather hit the Crobat and take it out. I do get a slightly useless party shot on the Vaporeon, but I'm going to swap into Woken here and I'm hoping that I can leave this there, because it's probably coming out now. Open. I do want to. I do want to give this Vaporeon on my last little choice scarf to hold. Okay, it's what it up to Skull. Uh, but we do still with it. No burn, no burn, no burn, no burn. Excellent. If I don't get Skull burns, hopefully no one gets Skull burns. Alright, here comes the Snorlax. Question is, do I actually want the Choice Scarf on the on the Snorlax? Or on the Vaporeon, I think. With the Orbeetle dead, which is my best um, Snorlax answer. It is dead, isn't it? Yes. I actually want that Choice Scarf onto the Snorlax so that it can't set up very well. And, or alternatively we could taunt it. Now this, the, the, the Choice Scarf trick onto the, onto the Vaporeon only worked so well because it only had Surf, so my opponent was forced to hit themselves. So I think what we're going to do is I think we're actually going to taunt. Okay, what's getting a Choice Scarf then? Permanent. Okay, well I don't mind that because I'm taking away its citrus berry so it can't do its harvest shenanigans. And we get a bit of health back, which is 
Pues más. And we're going to taunt the, the Vaporeon to stop any of its Aquarine shenanigans. Probably going to scold us and take out our Domanitan, but I'm okay with that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring in... We could actually just bring in the Incineroar here. So I don't think the, the Trevenant can do anything to the Incineroar. Now we're gonna we're gonna get Intimidate off onto the Trevenant to minimize its damage output. We're actually gonna try and feed this Vaporeon's leftovers. And if they swap out, we're still taking a, a useful item off someone else. So we're gonna we're gonna go back down onto the Vaporeon, we're gonna nick their leftovers. Oh no, we're gonna nick their rocky helmet. Either way, it's a handy item to no longer have. Yeah, and we're gonna work out what our Trevenant wants to lock itself into. Oh, that's unfortunate for my opponent, I think. Okay, no, this is both types. So Curse, Curse is going to be useful potentially for them, but they are going to take themselves out. And I didn't see which Pokemon of mine got a quick first test. Okay, here's the Incineroar. So we're going we're gonna to want the Incineroar out of here next turn. So now that we've kind of crippled both the Vaporeon and the Trevenant, I think we're going to get a chunk onto the Vaporeon here and we're going to parting shot out Do we want uh, damage reduction on more? Probably the Trevenant We've already got a bit of damage reduction on the, on the Vaporeon here We're going to take this off to go into the Moltres My opponent is just, just trying to put curses down on everything. That was actually kind of silly. I definitely should have gone for the Vaporeon, but it doesn't matter because it does redirect. Yeah, because I knew they were locked in, so I gave them a choice stuff, so they were locked into curse. I'm going to get the road map here. What I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to swap my Moltres out for the Resort to avoid the curse damage. Yeah, we don't take much from that. The Vaporeon's at minus two special attack now. So I think I'm going to want my Moltres uh, not on a timer. I can't taunt it anymore though, which is pretty. My uh, Domenitan has gone down. We are going to swap the Moltres out for the Scissor. And we're going to go for a voice, uh, a Volt Switch. We need to, need to go for a Volt Switch. I think we can probably take out the Vaporeon now with whatever there is. So I think it's more important now to just minimize the damage output of this Snorlax. Miss. Thankfully we haven't missed a willow list yet. We've missed plenty of rock slides, we haven't missed a willow list. So I do appreciate that from my writing. Alright, my opponent's going for the setup on the Vaporeon. and we do need to take it out at some point. And it is the curse coming on the Snorlax. We have put it on a bit of a timer here, so I think what we're going to do here is I think we're going to... I think we might um, return and bolt switch to Vaporeon. No, we don't even need to. I think I'm going to get a sword stand up here. And we're going to take this opportunity to bolt switch to Vaporeon. I can't remember what my opponent has in the back. Uh, have a slurp up in the back, so yeah, we, def we definitely want a sword stance here on our scissor. 
and the dinner bolts, which the Vaporeon. Take that out. So the slow clock will come in next turn. We're gonna get our Moltres in here. So we're gonna get our Incineroar in here, but we can still have the Incineroar. Concentration is not great, so we've got 3 minutes until the battle ends. We're gonna have to go fast, unfortunately, here. Well, the punch is gonna hopefully take out the slow clock uh, on that's gonna come in on the right. And we should win this over our opponent. We do have a full health in the back here. Um, well, not full health, but three quarters health Moltres in the back. Yeah, I think I'd do win this on the armor when it comes to that. And that's my point of trying to just take out a few more points this time. coming in, we're just going to bullet punch and take out Slow Puff. So I do still have the Darkest Lariat to get through all of those. Um, I, can, I can still use the Darkest Lariat to get through your Small Axe's uh, Cursed Defense Boosts, and the Defense Boosts mean nothing to my Moltres and my. Um, from all first all my version in the back to the special attackers. I also have a sword stance up on the seasonal, so I think with the intimidate, we're actually Yeah, I think I think the small axe is maybe plus two or plus three defense, but it's only plus one relative to my seasonal. So this is still gonna do a chunk to it. You get our berry. So I'd rather I hate games going to timer, I'd much rather games go to um, knockouts instead. So we are just going to try and lock in really quickly here. Uh, what's the more high damage move? I think the Wing Beat is the higher damage move. And Dark Slariot on top of its small axe, which completely ignores all of their defense boosts. Small axe is still pretty fat though. It does a chunk, but not a huge chunk. If you land on your Wing Beat, you get a critical hit. That's unfortunate for my opponent, but it's okay. I was winning that on timer anyway, so I don't think it really matters. I'd much rather actually end in a...